Another parade, another bloody negotiation. Smiles, everyone. We must be careful how we present ourselves. Why did Divine Victoria call the Exalted Council? She's kept Orlay from bothering us for the last two years. At increasing political cost, yes. She has done all she can, but the Exalted Council has become necessary. Orlay would control us, and based on their many marriage proposals, they have specific plans for you. Our real concern is Ferelden. They would see us disbanded entirely. Inquisitor, it has been too long. I hope the years have been kind to you. Have you been, Mother Giselle? I spent last summer in Empresse du Lyon, distributing food sent from the exalted plains. The Dales are finally recovering. Corypheus left a great deal of damage for us to repair. I appreciate your efforts. And I yours, Your Worship. I should mention that your forces at Suladin Keep were of great help. Please give my compliments to Baron Deschedin. Divine Victoria asked me to greet you on her behalf. She is currently attending to the Ferelden Ambassador's concerns. How do you think Divine Victoria has done these last two years? It is hardly for me to say, Inquisitor. With respect, that's never stopped you before, Mother Giselle. Victoria has proven adept at winning allies with both her intelligence and her faith. It is a blessing in these trying times. We are lucky to have her. You can probably just call her Leliana in private conversation. You can, Inquisitor. I prefer to use her divine name. Our last divine once joked about why I insisted upon calling her Justinia. She called it my way of reassuring her that I had not completely forgotten who was in charge. I'll speak to Divine Victoria. I believe she would appreciate that, Your Worship. The divine sees the good that you can do and have done. Duke Cyril will wish to greet you on behalf of Olay. I believe he is currently speaking with the Tevinta Ambassador. Many of your friends have returned as well. I hope you have a chance to speak with them before the Exalted Council begins. The Imperium sent an ambassador? Yes, Your Worship. Dorian Pavas has taken the chance to return from Tevinta. It will be good to see him again. I owe him my apology. I allowed my distrust of Divinta to cloud my judgment. He took a great risk coming to help us, and deserved better treatment. You're going to apologize? To Dorian? I have little patience for those who cannot admit they were wrong, Your Worship. Myself included. I will have to make my apology somewhere public. He will want an audience for his reaction. Who has returned for the Exalted Council? Your dwarven friend, Master Tetras, for one. I understand he spent much of the last few years in Kirkwall. I believe Sir Blackwall has returned as well, although he now uses the name Tom Ranier. Enjoy time with them while you can, Your Worship. I doubt you will have the chance once the Exalted Council is underway. Thank you, Mother Giselle. Your Worship, a final question, if I may. This Exalted Council... Thorelden would have the Inquisition disband. Olay sees its power as another feather in a chevalier's helmet. What do you wish to do with the Inquisition? You once told me about the first Inquisition that took place 800 years ago. You said that when their battle was over, that Inquisition soldiers sheathed their swords and went home. If our battle is truly over, perhaps it's time for us to do the same. Thank you. Make her watch over you, Inquisitor. I will not keep you any longer.
The Prince of Starkhaven wrote to you again. Of course he did. Just put that one in the pile with letters from the Merchants Guild. And the Captain of the City Guard had a very colorful message for me to deliver to you as well. Inquisitor! Andraste's ass, am I ever glad to see you! Am I interrupting something important? Yes. Which is perfect, because Bran here needed a break. Uh, this is Bran Caven. Until recently, he was the Viscount... Provisional Viscount. Of Kirkwall? And what are you doing now? I have resumed my post as Seneschal now that Master Tethras has been elected Viscount. You're the Viscount of Kirkwall now. Well, it seems the two of you have a great deal to discuss. Why don't I just leave you to it? So, it turns out you fund enough reconstruction efforts in a city-state, the nobles give you the worst job they can think of. Does this mean I can't tempt you into coming back to Skyhold? Wicked Grace hasn't been the same since you left. I'm probably going to be stuck in Kirkwall for the foreseeable future. There's a lot to do back home. They voted me in because I got the harbor and businesses up and running again. They want shit fixed, and I can do that. Anyway, I was hoping I'd catch you before the summit got underway. I got you a sort of present. It's official recognition of your title and holdings in Kirkwall. Congratulations. You're a Comtesse now. You can't actually do that without... Too late. Already did it. I also drafted an alliance with the new elf-led city council of Wycombe, so Clan Lavellan has some political muscle to flex now. That needs to be reviewed by... <clears throat> you were leaving us to talk, remember? <sighs> this is possibly too much, Varric. I don't know what to say. That's nothing. Practically nothing. Don't mention it. Oh, that reminds me. It's the key to the city. You can't give that away without approval from the Council and a special ceremony. It... It's just symbolic, anyway. It controls one of the giant chain nets in the harbor. Really? That is so much better than I thought. You can't give me the actual key that closes Kirkwall's harbor. That's absurd. Finally, someone with sense. I don't know how this council thing is going to end for the Inquisition. But whatever gets decided, you've got a place lined up in Kirkwall if you want it. Also, uh, control of the harbor, I guess? Anyway, you should meet with the diplomats. And we'll get in a game of Wicked Grace before I go back, though, right? I wouldn't miss it. Don't bet any public buildings this time. Inquisitor, I see you have time for afternoon refreshments. Did you know that a merchant in the courtyard is selling gemstones the same color as your eyes? What an odd thing to say. Hmm, I must see this for myself. I appreciate the help getting him elsewhere. I still don't understand Orlesians and their masks, but it makes him happy. And I needed the table. For breadcrumbs? Birds like breadcrumbs. Oh, Cole, good day. I didn't see you there. But I saw you. As lovely as your songs. I'm pleased for both of you. The world has ample pain, Inquisitor. The kindness found in Cole is rare indeed. Her songs bring happiness to those who hear, and I can make her happy in return. Well then, carry on. Here's you, and everyone. Glad to be back, all stuffed together. With the pressure full on. Again. Don't worry, Herald of Everywhere. 
I came prepared. I know what everyone needs. Just like best times. I expected a roof. It's early. Anyway, that was a good run. It's all been a good run. I needed that. And I need... You know it's ending, right? We can say it won't, but knobs in places like this. All they do is end things. They'll try a leash. Or worse. But maybe you aren't ready to quit just because some Lord Piddlebits is scared of us. Is someone moving against us? <laughs> sure. Start with everyone, everywhere. Point is, sooner or sooner, all this changes. And you've helped me understand. Too much. So it's my turn to help you. See, I have these friends. And all of them were the wrong sort of whatever. Their place changed, or it never was. So together, we made an us. Everyone needs an us. And when the world is done saying no and calls you the wrong sort of whatever, Maybe we can be that us for you. What do you think, Inquisitor? Want to run some rooftops as a Jenny? You want the Inquisitor? Don't I have a few more titles than your usual Jenny? No offense. Some taken. Pfft, words. Look, we don't want you. We want to be there for you. If you want to keep doing, it won't be nobles who help. It'll be friends. I don't think I can do what you do. But I'm glad to call you friend. Then we're still at your back. You'd have a hard time stopping us. Did we make this trip for nothing? Balls, no. We're gonna drink to tomorrow until it's yesterday. <laughs> to all my friends. Always and ever, Inquisitor. Always and ever. Sarah was never in the great... Creepy song is creepy. Blah. Your Worship, I'm glad you're here. Listen, I need you to keep the Chief distracted while we sneak this dragon skull through the room behind him. I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. It's for his birthday. I'll see what I can do, Krem. All right, here he comes. Just keep him talking. He loves talking. Hey, boss. Good to see you. Most mages hate the thick of battle, but I can't imagine hanging back. It's nice to get your hands dirty. That's why I like you, boss. You swing a sword. It's a weird sword made out of magic, but still. It's good to see that the veil has largely healed, now that most of the major rifts are closed. You might think otherwise, but the veil isn't technically a physical barrier. It's more like a magical vibration that repels the fade. Hmm. Did you know that Ferelden has its own names for lords? The country is divided into Tairnirs, governed by Tairns. Inside those are cities and arlings ruled by arls, and then there's the Banorn. It's a large area of countryside ruled by multiple bands. Good to know. Do you think news of the Exalted Council could affect the Lyrium shipments from Orzammar? Uh, maybe. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Sure you can. They must have that thing almost across the room by now, right? Ben Hasrath, 
remember. Surprise! Happy birthday, Chief. Oh, you guys. You got me. Fashionably late. I thought you weren't going to show. <laughs> I gave you my word we would talk, and I never break my word. Easy there. I was just teasing. So tell me everything that happened while I was away. And Garolf strolls up, hands filled with ripe squashes, and says, Sir, I must report that it was an utter boondoggle. <laughs> Uh, maybe you had to be there. It's good to see you fitting in. It has its warts, that's for sure. But this life feels right. Like it's where I'm supposed to be. Anyway, it's nice to be back. Though I'm not sure what to think of this council. The Wardens will be missing me. But they aren't gonna keep me away from a friend who might need my sword arm. <laughs> I'm getting a little worried for the palace, and any passerby. <laughs> oh. Is everything all right? Yes. Well, I wanted to speak with you, and now you're here. This seems serious. It's not about me. It's about you. Maybe you should sit. I can stand. Maybe I should sit. Inquisitor, I want you to know that I am your friend. I will always be your friend. Oh. Well, that's... So I hope to give you sound advice on this momentous day. Do what is in your heart, my friend. No matter what anyone might tell you. That's a lovely sentiment, Cassandra. Marriage is much more than a lovely sentiment, Inquisitor. Marriage? Cullen is not hard on the eyes, I'll give him that. But if you truly intend to... You're not proposing to anyone. I am going to kill Varric. Why do I believe everything he says? Why? He said I was going to propose. He mentioned a proposal. I suppose I filled in the blanks. Or he did this on purpose. That dwarf gets entirely too much joy from my discomfort. I might get married. I've thought about it. I suspected as much. Being Inquisitor has brought you good things. Many good things. But only a few have been by your choice. Take what happiness you can from those and do not let them go. That is all I meant to say. Advice from a friend for the days to come. You there! You're to dodge, not catch. If that ball were a fireball, you'd be dead. You... found a dog. They don't breed Mabari in Olay. The merchant said he was abandoned. Perhaps his owner's tired of the novelty. Poor boy. Well, he seems happy now. Another Ferelden trapped at the Winter Palace. Oh, I couldn't leave him to that fate. Besides, <laughs> I think he likes me. You could take him to Ferelden sometime. He should know where he came from. I did promise my sister a visit. She might try to spoil you. <laughs> Remember who you report to.
The Inquisition will change after this. I'm not yet sure what that will mean. Still, I've found certainty in my life now. The Council won't change that. Marry me. What? I mean, will you... Uh, uh, I had a plan, and... Uh, it wasn't a dog, but you were... Uh, it doesn't matter. I've thought of little else, and I don't need a plan. Only to know if you would. I would. Cullen, I will. What is it? Reciting vows to the Maker. That means nothing to me. But I know you. I want your promise to be true. People will notice the Inquisitor marrying her commander in the middle of the Exalted Council. It won't go over well. But we know a few people who can keep things... secret. Just know, everything feels like it was worth fighting for. It was. What happens now? I make a promise. Seles inaste var aravel, lama, aralas mirlas, belenaris. And then you. Oh, right. <clears throat> I swear unto the Maker and the Holy Andraste to love this woman the rest of my days. Darling, you made it. Excellent. I scheduled this appointment ages ago, and they do appreciate punctuality. Appointment? With the Imperial Garden Spa, of course. You work so hard, my dear. I wanted to treat you. I've never heard of a fancy spa serving elves. You are the Inquisitor, darling. Savior of the Empire. They won't turn you away. What are the cheese wheels for? It pains me that you even have to ask. You've clearly been living too long in barely civilized conditions. <laughs> Did you hear something? Relax, darling. It's spa day. How have you been? It seems ages since we've spoken. How are things with our dear Commander Cullen? Things are excellent. Thank you for asking. It's such a comfort to hear that at least one facet of your life hasn't fallen apart due to incompetence. <laughs> you must be keeping very busy. Someone has to keep the mess that's been made of Thedas's institutions of magic from flying apart. Don't you feel better, my dear? This place really does work miracles. What... happened? Darling, it's spa day. Don't fret. You'll undo all the good they've done. Come along, Inquisitor. They have other appointments, you know. Orle is on your side, Lord Parvis. The Inquisition's support is not a thing to lose lightly. Which is why the Orlesian court is circling it with a net and collar? But you'll have to excuse me. I see an old friend I must greet. Inquisitor, how long has it been? Don't actually tell me. I despise feeling old. It's good to see you, my friend. You arrived ahead of me. I hope all's well. It's everything I expected. We've been spared the burden of surprise. 
Orle wants the Inquisition tamed, Ferelden wants it gone, the Chantry medals, and Tavinta sends but one ambassador. That's me, by the way. A reward for my interest in the South. Thankfully, Ambassador Pavis is a token appointment. Call on me as you like. Inquisitor, Duke Cyril Montfort, member of the Council of Heralds and Lord of Chateau Hain. I have long followed your work. It is extraordinary. Is that sentiment shared by the rest of the court? <laughs> of course. Ole wishes only to offer respectful guidance to the Inquisition. Does your grace feel the Inquisition should continue to rule itself? I would rather see the Inquisition join us freely than be carved into pieces for the chessboard. I have not forgotten Justinia's death. I had friends who perished at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. More than the good you have done, it is a good we may do together I don't wish to lose. Whatever happens, Inquisitor, I wish you well. Divine Victoria, am I interrupting? Of course not, Inquisitor. I was catching up with Redcliffe's Arl. He's here to represent Ferelden at the summit. Inquisitor, good to meet you. How are things in Redcliffe, my lord? Blessedly quiet. The mayor conveys his greetings. Redcliffe remembers its savior. I'll try not to keep you from more important matters. Very well. We'll continue this later, your perfection. Many are frightened of the Inquisition's power, but I will do all I can to allay their fears. Is there anything I can do to make your job easier? Explore the grounds. Let yourself be seen. The delegates need to put a face to the legend. I have much to do, but let me say this. I may no longer be your spy master, but I am always here if you require. I'm glad you finally arrived, Inquisitor. The Crown's anxious for news. And your thoughts on Ferelden's position? The breach is long gone, yet Skyhold's army remains. Ferelden can't continue to ignore soldiers on its borders. I appreciate knowing where Ferelden stands. You are owed that, Inquisitor, especially here. These Orlesians will talk circles around you before you get a simple greeting out. I won't keep you longer. We'll have words enough when the Exalted Council begins. As the most eloquent dwarf you know, Sparkles... Speech! Speech! Way too much speech. Varric, there's really no need. What's going on? Inquisitor! You're just in time. Sparkles, the Imperium doesn't deserve you. Or want you. It, it may even kill you. But we'll miss you. If it counts. And you didn't know. Okay, folks. Time to take the party elsewhere. <laughs> Tom never wanted any. <laughs> I swear. Uh, leave him. It's... true. When the Exalted Council has ended, I'm going back to Tevinta. For good, this time. You know I'll miss you. Naturally. My father is dead. Assassinated, I believe. I received notice this morning. A perversely cheerful letter congratulating me on assuming his seat in the Magisterium. We only met a few times while I was home. He didn't say anything about keeping me as his heir. This ambassadorship, his doing, I'm told. He must have wanted me away when the trouble began. I have to go back. So you'll truly be a magister? Oh, yes. I can't wait to degrade the magisterium with my presence. A new outfit is required. 
And then what? I find my father's killers and kill them back. Then I find those giving Tevinter a bad name and kill them. They're most likely the same people, so that should make the job easier. You'll need help. I could go with you. Not this time, my friend. I won't be entirely without support. Mayveris has gathered other Magisters who feel as we do. We'll be an actual faction in the Magisterium. I'll teach them manners, take them shopping. It'll be fun. How does Bull feel about this? He... wants to come with me. It can't happen, of course. A Canari cannot simply walk around the Imperium, even in a Magister's company. I don't want him hurt. He doesn't want me hurt. We're working it out. I know it was complicated, but... I'm sorry about your father. Thank you. It still doesn't feel real. I wish you safe travels, and the best of luck. Oh, I'll need it, thank you. Magisters are tricksy bastards. A present. A going away present. It's a sending crystal. Amazing what friendship with the Inquisition gives you access to. If I get in over my head, or you're overwhelmed with sorrow for lack of my velvety voice... Magic. What? You didn't think I would just leave and you'd never hear from me again, did you? You are my dearest friend. Perhaps my only friend. That will never change, no matter where we are. Now let's finish the good wine before the others get back. Will you walk with me? The first time I came to the Winter Palace, I was only 18. I was dazzled. Such rich hangings, splendid marble columns, more golden lions than I could count. It's all still here, still bright, but I no longer see that same palace. And that makes you sad? It is easier on the heart to just see gilding. Now all I see are hands rubbed raw to make gold gleam, tears shed in the night over silk embroidery. Others overlook them and forget their pain, but I am divine and I cannot be blind. They seek to tear the Inquisition down. You feel it, no? Fear. Have we not made enough allies? If friends were easily made and kept, we wouldn't need diplomacy. Our allies can be cordial to our faces and still dread the future. They are afraid of nothing so much as the hand that directs it all. Mine. Already your actions have begun to reshape Thedas. Your influence is felt everywhere. It was only a matter of time before they moved. I'm surprised it took this long. The Inquisition's time is coming to an end. The Inquisition has done enough, more than enough. Maybe it's time for us to lay down our swords and go home. We set out to restore peace, and now peace is upon us. You and I have come so far through the darkness together, it is time for us both to live in the light. But whatever you decide, I will be honored to stand beside you. It's been quite a day so far, has it not? I've been speaking with representatives from everywhere. Have they given you trouble? Not at all. It is quite alarming. It means they are all saving themselves up for later. Would you walk with me? I should like to take some air before the Exalted Council becomes inescapable. The palace has been most accommodating. We are, after all, here at their insistence, but the ministers may... No. No more talk of the Council. This meeting was to spend time with you in a more relaxed fashion. Is this in your daily notes? Three to four o'clock, idle chat with the Inquisitor. Of course not! <clears throat> not precisely. The truth is, there is a small entertainment happening tonight, to which I may be able to find a pair of invitations. You'd like me to go with you? Oh, very much so. In all the years you've worked with Orlais, you had so little time to enjoy its culture. 
Perhaps you're right. These meetings and talks don't allow for much leisure time. And then back to Skyhold without a moment's pause to take in where we are. With all that's been happening, I promised myself a single evening out. I'd very much like to go with a friend. And what is this small entertainment? Something to ease our minds. I would very much like to surprise you with the details. Why not? Josephine, I put myself in your capable hands. Splendid! I will arrange things at once. The past years have been so busy. We have earned at least a few moments of rest. A calm night out sounds... Oh, bravo! Bravo! Was the woman in gold playing a king? Who was the man in feathers? Oh, it's all very simple. The first actor's mask is determined by... Uh, well, I will lend you the program guide. But tell me, did you enjoy the performance? I don't think I'm really an opera person. Ah, well, at least you broadened your horizons. That's certainly one way to put it. Oh, look! The encore signal! Thank you, Your Holiness. Now, Artigan, as to your concerns... The Inquisition established an armed presence in Ferelden territory. You outright seized Caer Bronach in Crestwood. Our goal was to keep more Ferelden citizens from dying, not to seize power. Your help was appreciated two years ago, Inquisitor. Now order has been restored, yet you remain. Invading under pretext of restoring order is exactly what the Grey Wardens did to us centuries ago, and we exiled them. Now the Inquisition is doing the same thing with Grey Wardens in their ranks. Your concern is ill-founded. The Grey Wardens have proven their worth time and again. Of course Orle tolerates this interference. Without the Inquisition, Selene would have neither her throne nor her elven... Marquise. Rest assured, Tegan, the Empire of Orle will not stand idle if the Inquisition oversteps its bounds. Unlike Ferelden, however, Orle understands that these were the well-intentioned mistakes of a young organization. An organization in need of a guiding hand. Yours, no doubt. Pardon me, Inquisitor. Divine Victoria wishes to speak with you in private. The Divine Victoria? Who is sitting just up there? Yes, and who was once your spy master? It's a pressing matter, your worship. My apologies. An urgent matter has come to my attention. Ambassador Montelier, can you handle this for a short while? I... Of course, Inquisitor. This is highly irregular. Perhaps it would be best if we took a short recess. The guard said we should both see this. I believe she was correct. A canary warrior in full armor. How did he get into the Winter Palace? So, what would the left hand of the Divine see when she looked at this? This is a warrior, not a spy. Part of the Antam, the canary military. Most of his wounds come from a fight against someone using magic, but at least a few are from a blade. He was badly hurt, separated from his allies, and made it here before he died. But how? Would the Iron Bull know anything about this? I asked, and he is as surprised as we are. Since becoming Talvashoth, he has had no contact with his people. He seems frustrated at not knowing more. We need to find out what's going on. Can Josephine manage the diplomats while I look around? 
She will be fine. It's all speeches and posturing for the first few days anyway. I will extend the recess as long as possible. I will also have our friends ready themselves for battle if need be. You think that's likely? I think the Exalted Council may be more exciting than we expected. One dead canary was bad enough. Now we have more, and they're hostile. This makes no sense. The canary may not be friendly to the Inquisition, but they have no reason to attack us. They also have no reason to be here, or using Illuvians at all. I've had the mirror placed under guard for now, Your Holiness. Cullen, please just call me Liliana. Yes, your uh, Liliana. I just wanted the Exalted Council to go smoothly. We must ensure that the Kunari do not disrupt the negotiations. The Exalted Council is in a very delicate state. I'm certain you can soothe the nobles' ruffled feathers while we solve the real problem. Not when the Inquisitor insults everyone present by walking out in the middle of the talks. Our only advantage is that Orlais and Ferelden are divided in goal and grievance. If they unite against us, Divine Victoria will have no choice but to support their claims. We could lose everything. I know we're asking a lot of you, Ambassador. I promise we won't make this any harder for you than necessary. My apologies. I will attend to the Exalted Council. And while Josie does that, we will investigate. We, Your Holiness? <sighs> you do, Josie? I'll head back to the crossroads. We need to find out what the Kunari are doing and why they attacked. And I'll have a quiet word with our honor guard. Stay back. Oh. Wait. Your hand. Are you the Inquisitor? Odd to find a human down in the deep roads at all, let alone one surrounded by Kunari. We don't have much time. Please, what the Vidasala is doing, you have to stop her. The Vidasala? She's the leader of the Canari here. She hates magic. Her job was to study it and stop it at all costs. Not anymore. I don't care whether you serve Fenharel or not. Someone has to stop her. Why did the Kunari think that the Inquisition serves Fenharel? I don't know. The Vidasala said it and, well, you're Dalish. It made as much sense as anything. We've had agents of Fenharel causing trouble all over the crossroads. Sabotage, making spirits attack us. I assume the Inquisition was their army. That you came here because Fenharel told you to. Who are you exactly? My name is Geron. Sir Geron, once. I was a Templar in Kirkwall. Until I joined the Kune. Your Kunari? Kirkwall was... Madness. Chaos. The Kunari were like the eye of a storm. I stand for order and discipline. Protecting the innocent from magic. But this plan... It's as mad as Meredith ever was. What is it that you want me to stop? This place is a Lyrium mining and processing center. The Kunari need it for... Have you ever heard of Sarabas? It's a mage. Except Kunari mages are... Much more dangerous than those among humans or elves. Even as a Templar, I'd never seen anything like the power Sarabas can unleash. And now Vidasala is giving them lyrium. A lot of lyrium. It's part of something she calls Dragon's Breath. There's more to it than that, but I couldn't find out what. The Canari don't like it when you ask too many questions. Where are we? Why are there elven mirrors in the deep roads? This place is close to... Something like a Lyrian spring. The more we mine, the more there seems to be. As for the mirrors, I don't know. Maybe the elves were mining here too. What are you doing down here? The Canari wanted me to teach them everything I knew about Lyrium. Where it comes from, everything it can do, how we put it to use. I knew enough from my time in the Order. They figured out more. I'm not sure how. Maybe they got to the Carter. The Kunari can't be mining their own Lyrian. It kills anyone who tries, other than dwarves. It killed the Kunari at first. But Kunari workers have a discipline only Tranquil can match. And they're quick learners. They figured it out. I'm not sure how to stop the Kunari from using Lyrian. 
Delirium's only part of the Vidasala's larger plan, Inquisitor. She said it would save the South. That can mean only one thing. An invasion. This mine is the only source of Lyrium the Canari have. They're using Gatlock, the explosive powder in the round casks, to mine, so they don't have to touch raw Lyrium. If you get the primers from Central Supply, you can prime the Gatlock and detonate it. The mines will go up in flames. All right, I'll try to stop them here. I doubt my blessing counts for much now, but... Make her watch over you. Deep Stalkers and Cavins will cut off reinforcements, but they'll still come when they hear trouble. You've got to find the Vidasala to end this war before it begins. There's no telling how bad things will get when I destroy the mine. You'd better get moving. I will. Good luck, Inquisitor. Let's go. We have a Lyrium mine to ruin. Dragon's Breath. <laughs> the Canare always enjoy their metaphors. But what does it mean? Who knows? Canari agents moving through Illuvians to attack the South is bad enough already. I still do not understand why they accused the Inquisition of serving Fenerel. We know that Mithal actually exists. It's possible Fenerel is still here in some form, too. What you describe in the ruins certainly implies that the Dread Wolf of Elven legend is a real person. But how does that implicate us? What made them decide that the Inquisition serves this Fenherel? Hopefully we will learn more after we have stopped them. Let's see the Exalted Council try to disband the Inquisition after we've saved them from this Dragon's Breath. We must find out what Dragon's Breath is first. For now, our only lead is the Canari leader, the Vidisala. Gentlemen! My apologies, Lady Josephine. There has been an incident with one of your soldiers. How dare you! It was bad enough that the Inquisition chose not to inform the Exalted Council of the Kunari Corpse. Orle would have been happy to help with the matter. But now your own guards are attacking servants? You have overstepped your bounds. Thank you for bringing this to my attention, gentlemen. I'll see to this personally. Thank you, Inquisitor. Orle stands ready to assist the Inquisition, as always. Secrets and lies. Do you understand why we fear your Inquisition? You act as if you're the solution to every problem. How long before you drag us into another war? What's going on here? The Orlesians tried to take one of our people, Inquisitor. We've secured the area. This is the Winter Palace. You cannot simply seize control when one of your guards attacks a servant. The Inquisition is handling this. When some noble commits a crime of fashion, you can take over. I only asked what he was doing. And when I refused to bow to the Inquisition's dogs, you attacked me. How would you like us to handle the situation, Inquisitor? That barrel there, where did it come from? I was ordered to bring wine for the guests. You're lying. Your Inquisition soldiers are completely out of control. No, we're in control. Keep talking and you'll find yourself in chains. Please take the servant into custody. Right away, Your Worship. Inquisitor? Ambassador Montelier will explain later. For now, please hold the servant for questioning. As you say, Inquisitor, Lord Cyril will hear about this. Inquisitor, I also found this by the barrel. I can't read the language. Did you resolve the problem with the guard? The guard is the least of our problems. Someone smuggled Gatlock barrels into the Winter Palace. Smile, Inquisitor. There are many eyes upon us. At least now we know the true extent of the dragon's breath. How are you still smiling? Years of training as a bard, Inquisitor. We cannot show weakness now. Enemies could be watching, or we can let them cease idle conversation between two friends. You think the Dragon's Breath is these Gatlock barrels? Of course. A surprise attack, even through the Illuvians, would have met fierce resistance. 
But if everyone at the exalted council died in an explosion, the South would be rudderless, vulnerable to attack. This is what Corypheus should have done after the explosion at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. An attack as swift and unstoppable as the breath of a dragon. The guard who confronted the servants said she found this note near one of the barrels. It looks like Kunari writing. Let me see. I picked some up from the Iron Bull, though I'm told my accent is atrocious. These are orders for positioning the Gatlock in the palace. When duty has been performed, report to the Vidasala through the mirror marked by a bookcase. If we're going to find the Vidasala and stop this dragon's breath, this is our chance. Good. While you do that, I will have agents locate the Gatlock barrels and remove them safely. I will also send word to my foreign contacts. We must see where else this dragon could strike. Survivor of the Breach, Herald of Change, Hero of the South. The Vidasala, I presume. After fulfilling your purpose at the Breach, it is astonishing to hear you still walked free among your people. Your duty is done, Inquisitor. It is time to end your magic. It's not too late to put our weapons down and talk. There's no need to pretend that you're blind to what you've begun. I am no stranger to catastrophe, but this chaos in the South defies comprehension. The Kuhn left your people to curb your own magic. You've amply proven we should have stepped in long ago. Is that what Dragon's Breath is for? Murdering our heads of state just to control our magic? Do you believe closing the Breach solved everything? That its consequences stopped there? The day we saw the Breach, the Kuhn decided its action. We would remove your leaders and spare those who toil. This agent of Fenharel has disrupted everything. Lives that were to be spared, lost for him. Who is this agent? Why do you think they work for the Inquisition? Kill the Inquisitor, then follow me to the Darvarad. Your agents confirm there are Gatlock battles in Denerin's palace? Yes, and in Valroyo and across the Free Marches. The Winter Palace is not the only target. The Canari are one order from destroying every noble house in the known world. There is a bright side. Warning the Ambassadors will remind them of the Inquisition's value. Not when the Inquisition is responsible for that threat. This is our fault. Fault? No. But our responsibility. <sighs> How did it happen? The elven servant handling the barrels confessed to working for the Canari. But the servant was Orlesian. That implicates Orle, not us. But the barrels arrived at the Winter Palace on the Inquisition Supply Manifest. <sighs> How are we supposed to fight a war when we can't even trust our own people? Do you know who got the barrels onto the Inquisition Manifest? Yes, several of the Inquisition's elven workers have gone missing. I had their backgrounds checked. They joined the Inquisition after fleeing the chaos in Kirkwall. I remember when Kirkwall was at its worst. Many of the city's elves converted to the Kuhn, trying to find a better life. And the Kinari turned them into spies. The Inquisition stopped Corypheus and saved the world. We can't let an outside threat change who we are. I fought to protect the Inquisition in this exalted council. And for what? So we could deceive and threaten those we claimed to protect? Once we locate the spies... This isn't about the spies! You hid the Kunari body. You've all but seized control of the Winter Palace. We did what was right, not what was politically convenient. Do you know what this has cost us with Orle and Ferelden? They are planning to dismantle us as we speak. And perhaps they are right. The Marquis. I thought it was fine. It's been under control for years. All the demons I fought, all the rifts I closed. I don't want to die.
Not knowing that the world still needed me. So I'm going to the Davarat. Thank you, Inquisitor. Would you... Would you like us to inform the Exalted Council of the danger? Yes. If we fail, the Exalted Council needs to know what happened. I will inform them personally. Leliana... I can... No, your job is hard enough already. This is my responsibility. I'll have guards ready at the Alluvian, in case the Canari attack the palace. Make a watch over you. Dragon's Breath is... an actual dragon? Kethar! Vaz! Inquisition! Nira Atathi Asara! Miravas Adim Gada! Hisrat, now! Please! Venet Katas! Not a chance, ma'am. Shara! <laughs> Dear Inquisitor, you have such little time left. You must finally see the truth. Elven magic already tore the sky apart. If the agents of Ben Harrell are not stopped, you will shatter the world as well. Whatever you think I've done, mass assassination isn't a good moral high ground. The South was poisoned by these elves' manipulations. It suffers just as you do now. You would have died from the mark on your hand, but for the help of one of their chief agents. The same agent who helped seal the breach, who led you to Skyhold, who gave Corypheus the orb, then founded the Inquisition. Solus, agent of Fen Harel. What? Solus is an agent of Fen Harel. Did you not know? We thought you were his ally. Solus tricked us all. He pushed a dying Canari into the Winter Palace to lure you into opposing us. Without him, we could have brought the South peace and wisdom along the gentle path. Now we must take the way of blades. <laughs> Oh. Hannah Hayden, Inquisitor. If it is any consolation, Solus will not outlive you. Whatever else, Solus was one of us. I won't leave him for Vidasala. Ebesit kata et wa ost. Maras kata! Your forces have failed. Leave now and tell the Canari to trouble me no further.
Solas. That should give us more time. I suspect you have questions. The Kunari answered some of those questions. The information I found while traveling through the Alluvians answered more. You're Fenharel. You're the Dreadwolf. Well done. I was Solus first. Fenharel came later. An insult I took as a badge of pride. The Dreadwolf inspired hope in my friends and fear in my enemies. Not unlike Inquisitor, I suppose. You also know the burden of a title that all but replaces your name. I saw the stories as we traveled through the Alluvians. Are they true? They are closer than the Dalish legends, though still prone to making me into something more than I am. I'm so sorry, Solas. What you've seen, I... can't imagine. I sought to set my people free from slavery to would-be gods. I broke the chains of all who wished to join me. The false gods called me Fenharel, and when they finally went too far, I formed the veil and banished them forever. Thus I freed the elven people, and in so doing, destroyed their world. Uh, how did creating the veil destroy the world? You saw the remains of Via Dathara. The library was intrinsically tied to the Fade, and the Veil destroyed it. There were countless other marvels, all dependent on the presence of the Fade. All destroyed. Your legends are half right. We were immortal. It was not the arrival of humans that caused us to begin aging. It was me. The Veil took everything from the Elves. Even themselves. You love the Fade. Why would you create the Veil to hide it all away? Because every alternative was worse. Meaning? Had I not created the Veil, the Evanuris would have destroyed the entire world. You banished the False Gods. You didn't kill them. You met Mithol, did you not? The first of my people do not die so easily. The Evanuris are banished forever, paying the ultimate price for their misdeeds. You said that the Elven Gods went too far. What did they do that made you move against them? They killed Mithal. <laughs> A crime for which an eternity of torment is the only fitting punishment. I thought Mithal was one of the Elven Uris. She was the best of them. She cared for her people. She protected them. She was a voice of reason. And in their lust for power, they killed her. The Elven Uris were Elven mages. How did they come to be remembered as gods? Slowly. It started with a war. War breeds fear. Fear breeds a desire for simplicity. Good and evil, right and wrong, chains of command. After the war ended, generals became respected elders, then kings, and finally gods. The Avenuris. That's the past. What about the future? I lay in dark and dreaming sleep while countless wars and ages passed. I woke still weak a year before I joined you. My people fell for what I did to strike the Evanuris down. But still, some hope remains for restoration. I will save the Elven people, even if it means this world must die. Why does this world have to die for the Elves to return? A good question, but not one I will answer. You have always shown a thoughtfulness I respected. It would be too easy to tell you too much. I am not Corypheus. I take no joy in this. But the return of my people means the end of yours. It is my fight. You should be more concerned about the Inquisition. Your Inquisition. In stopping the Dragon's Breath, you have prevented an invasion by Canari forces. With luck, they will return their focus to Devinter. That should give you a few years of relative peace. 
The Kunari said the Inquisition was unknowingly working for agents of Fenharel. I gave no orders. You led us to Skyhold. Corypheia should have died unlocking my orb. When he survived, my plans were thrown into chaos. When you survived, I saw the Inquisition as the best hope this world had of stopping him. And you needed a home. Hence, Skyhold. You gave your orb to Corypheus? Not directly. My agents allowed the Venatori to locate it. The orb had built up magical energy while I lay unconscious for millennia. I was not powerful enough to open it. The plan was for Corypheus to unlock it, and for the resulting explosion to kill him. Then I would claim the orb. I did not foresee a Devinter Magister having learned the secret of effective immortality. What would have happened if Corypheus had died, and you'd recovered the orb? I would have entered the Fade using the mark you now bear. Then I would have torn down the veil. As this world burned in the raw chaos, I would have restored the world of my time. The world of the Elves. If you destroyed the veil, wouldn't the False Gods be freed? I had plans. I never thought of you as someone who would do that, Solus. Thank you. You must understand. I awoke in a world where the Veil had blocked most people's conscious connection to the Fade. It was like walking through a world of tranquil. We aren't even people to you. Not at first. You showed me that I was wrong. Again. That does not make what must come next any easier. You never cared about us. We were the means to an end. You were people, and you deserved better. Like all the rest I've used in one hopeless battle after another. You control the Illuvians now? Yes. You remember Briala from Halam Shiral? For a time, she controlled part of the labyrinth. One of my agents was supposed to take it from her. But he did not succeed. I had to override the magic personally. The Canaries stumbled upon this section independently. With them gone, the Illuvians are now mine. What's wrong with the Inquisition? You created a powerful organization, and now it suffers the inevitable fate of such. Betrayal and corruption. It's not that simple. Do you know how I discovered the Canari plot? The plot I disrupted by leading them to your doorstep? The Canari spies in the Inquisition tripped over my spies in the Inquisition. The Elven Guard who led you to the Canari body? Who intercepted the servant with the Gatlock barrel? Mine. Why bother disrupting the Kunari plot if you're going to destroy the world regardless? You have shown me that there is value in this world, Inquisitor. I take no joy in what I must do. Until that day comes, I would see those recovering from the breach free of the Kune. Why? Because I am not a monster. If they must die, I would rather they die in comfort. In any event, it is done. I guess we owe you for that one too. I hope it gives your people some final peace. There's still the matter of the Anchor. It's getting worse. Yes. I'm sorry. And we are almost out of time. <laughs> the Mark will eventually kill you. Drawing you here gave me the chance to save you. At least for now. You don't need to destroy this world. I'll prove it to you. I would treasure the chance to be wrong once again, my friend. Take my hand. I'm sorry. Live well, while time remains. Something must be done, but we cannot lose the Inquisition now. We stand on the brink of war with the Canari. Yes, because this Solas provoked them in the first place. The Inquisition did not cause this threat. We informed the summit of the danger. The danger posed by Canari spies inside your organization. Without our organization, you would not be alive to complain. No one has forgotten what you have done. 
but Corypheus is two years dead. If the Inquisition is to continue, it must do so as a legitimate organization, not a glorified mercenary band. Inquisitor. You all know what this is? A writ. From Divine Justinia authorizing the formation of the Inquisition. We pledge to close the breach, find those responsible, and restore order, with or without anyone's approval. It wasn't a formally authorized treaty that saved Ferelden's people. It wasn't careful diplomacy that ended your inane civil war. It was never about the organization. It was about people doing what was necessary. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a world to save. Again. Effective immediately, the Inquisition is disbanded.
My agents have found nothing. With the Illuvians, he could be anywhere. With the Inquisition officially disbanded, we have no army, no formal alliances. We have what we truly need. <sighs> we will need to be careful. Solus knows everything about us. Who we are, how we work, our strengths, and weaknesses. Then we find people he doesn't know. We will save our friend from himself. If we can. What is this? A new book? All this shit is weird. Oh, Varric, that is a terrible title. What are you even thinking? The sky churned like a rolling sea on a dark and stormy night. Centered on a gaping hole that led to the arse end of nowhere. A hole that spit up many things that day. Comets, demons, and a whole lot of trouble. <gasps> it's about the Inquisition. The din of the tavern cut the silence like it owed the carter money. In the middle, in her element, Red Jenny. She looked me up and down, mostly down. Not playing, weirdy, she said, gesturing with and dismissively eating a sandwich. Don't write that. Seriously, piss up a rope. Sarah made the subtext text, which suited me fine. The court enchanter swirled into the room like a drop of beautiful poison spreading in a wine glass. She sized me up with a glance. I'm so glad you made it, my dear, she said. I am Madame de Fair, the most terrifying person you shall ever meet.
Liliane enfolded Alphonse in an embrace as warm as a serpent's kiss. I always knew I could count on your support. The Count did not feel the bite of her poisoned dart until it was too late. Even if it requires your death. Drops of rain glistened on the griffin medallion grasped tightly in Blackwall's hand. The silverite wings of valor, they mean nothing. He flung the medal to the cold and uncaring ground. You don't know what I've done. You don't know me. <sighs> so romantic. like a shadow that also moved like a knife, a shadow wearing a hat where dreams came to die. It's a riddle, he whispered. A cold riddle that gnaws at your mind, but you'll feel better when it's gone. That makes as much sense as anything Cole says. Place your herald above the law, Ambassador. Whose law, my lady? Josephine's eyes glittered like angry opals. The law destroyed by rebellion, by civil war, by poor fiscal management. We are the law. left our mark on adamant, but the dust hadn't settled, and neither had Harding. I can offer you a drink, if I catch your meaning. If you caught my meaning, you'd have offered a double. What is even happening here? Iron Bull was a great slab of muscle with horns that could hang a tapestry. One eye scanned for threats, while the other hid behind an eye patch like a chantry sister's old sins. Come on, he barked, not looking back as he entered. The dancer with the great rack comes on in five. That is spot on, actually. The commander had the look of a Templar who had seen the worst of humanity, yet still had the time to style his hair. This is unjust a war, he said, his gaze steely like a dull blade. It's the only war. Cullen! That's Cullen! The mage wore a class of handsome sneer cultivated by a thousand years of Tevinter elitism. The name's Dorian, he glared. D-O-R-I-A-N. Spell it right, you marble-headed lump, or it's toad time. A toad? That's hardly credible. The bold elf spun, mage staff crackling like the city after a good man's murder. You're crazy, the Red Templar cried in terror. Moonlight glinted off ears like the knives you never see coming. Better to fade out than burn away. Ugh, Varric. Wait, where am I? I don't... Oh, here it is. The Seeker clutched at my vest, 
Her tears as desperate as they were pitiful. Varric, I was wrong about everything, she sobbed. Could you find it in your noble heart to forgive me? That dwarf, he... he... he put me in the book! <laughs> I'm in the book! I am reading the shit out of this! <laughs> <laughs>